And I will read for your hearing verses 1 and 2, and then verse 10. I encourage you to read this entire psalm in your devotional time this evening. Psalm 46, verses 1 and 2, and verse 10. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. And then verse 10, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. I'd like to preach this morning from the subject, When Trouble Comes. When Trouble Comes. When trouble comes into our lives, when our health fails, when we are laid off, when we encounter family and uh, community problems, the hardest thing in the world to do is simply to be still. When our personal business is being discussed on every phone line. When our children fail to make the passing grade. It's just hard to be still and to know that he is God. This psalm was a continual source of comfort to the reformer Martin Luther, who used it as a basis for his great hymn that he wrote, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. And it can be just as precious to us today if, if we'll learn uh, its secrets. For God is present. He is a present help in our trouble. I wonder if there's a witness in this room somewhere. God is a present help in trouble. The Hebrew word translated trouble literally means a tight space. Have you ever been in a tight space where you were pressed on every side, when your options were limited, your freedom is restricted, or your progress has come to a screeching halt? That's the time we need to know that God is our help in trouble. Because you see, when everything is going our way and when we have lots of friends and opportunity and finances and, and we have so much going for us, it's hard to think of God as being the one who is still able to provide. But don't lose, don't allow your success or, or your good fortune to give you the impression that you can make it all by yourself. The psalmist had to come to the understanding that God is his present help in trouble. You know, sometimes our problems are the result of uncontrollable circumstances. You know, sometimes things just, things just happen because if they just happen. Sometimes it's no fault of our own. It's, it just occurs. It's just a part of our human existence. 
And, uh, but verse 2 reminds us that we will not fear even though the earth be removed and though its mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. This, the psalmist is describing a natural disaster which involves storms and, and seas and earthquakes and wind. But even in the midst of that, God is his helper. For he says in the text, I will not fear. When the foundations are shaken, when things I've grown used to are removed, when we face circumstances over which we have no control, God has promised to be our refuge. And so I just want to encourage you this morning, whatever you may be going through in your life, remember that God is your refuge. You know, sometimes our trouble is the result of insurmountable opposition. In verses 8 to 9, the psalmist speaks of war and bows and spears and chariots. And he is saying, when I face an army against which I have no ability, no weaponry in which to fight, I'm still not afraid. And why was it? Why was the psalmist able to say this? Because he discovered that God was his refuge. That God was his strength. That God was a present help in the time of his need. And I just wonder this morning, do we have any witnesses in this church? Have you discovered that God will not fail you? That he is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. But let's also understand this truth. God does not send the trouble. But sometimes God uses the trouble. Can I get a witness in this house today? Sometimes God allows the trouble to come so that he can help us say, I don't know what to do. Because as long as we think within our own minds and hearts that we can, we can solve all of our issues, that we can do anything we feel big enough to do, then guess what? You have placed yourself on the throne. But God will not allow any man, any woman, woman to take his place on the throne. And so sometimes God allows situations to come simply so that we can come to the realization that we don't know it all. Have you ever been around somebody who just knows it all? Doesn't matter what subject, what topic you're talking about, they're the expert. But sometimes we need to understand that it's okay just to not know. But what makes a child of God wise is that he or she knows where to get the answer. Oh yes, we are determined people who, who want to come up with the answers ourselves. And if God will allow us, sometimes we will put ourselves on his throne. You know, when it comes to our career choices, we want to be what we want to be. I want to do what I want to do. When it comes to church, you know, if we're not careful, we'll find ourselves act, 
acting as if we don't need God. You know, if God just allowed everything we touch to turn to gold, if he just allowed every project, every, everything we sought to do just to happen, then we would find ourselves in God's place. But sometimes God allows situations to come and and problems that go unsolved, not, simple, not to frustrate us, but that we might return to the Lord our God, who is our creator, who, who can do all things but fail. Oh, yes. We, must, we will never really know how much we need him and how much he can do for us until we humbly acknowledge, Lord, we just don't know. But as long as you've got all the answers, as long as nobody can tell you anything, as long as you've got it all going on, But the question remains, how do we get help from God? Well, the answer is shocking. Because, you know, we are a people of activity. We are doers. But notice what the text says, be still. Turn to somebody and tell them, we must be still. Now, the word here in this text, be still, means to cease striving, to stop working at it, to relax and let God be God. Because we must understand that God's strategies do not fit our lifestyles. Have you figured it out? God did not attend the schools that you went to. Have you figured it out? That God is special. That his ways are not like our ways. That his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Have you, under, have you come to understand that sometimes God does not approach life like we do? Think about it. God's strategies sometimes do not match our lifestyles. Think about the pace of family life. How we're always ripping and running and taking Jimmy to this rehearsal and that choir and doing this and going shopping and running, ripping, running. Our lifestyle says everything but be still. Well, Reverend, I need some help here this morning because... If, if, if I just take your word, what you're saying to me, I, I just don't understand it. I, I don't, I'm not sure I, I've got what you're saying. Well, your question is, well, how do I be still? Well, let's break it down this morning. Well, we, we can learn to be still with our schedules. And I'm preaching to myself, too, this morning. We must simplify our lives. We have to downsize. Uh, we have to, in the midst of our busy schedules, we've got to find time for personal devotion. If the only time you talk to God is when you walk in Ebenezer, you go, if you keep doing that, you're going to come.